Well, as municipalities prepare for new leadership, how do we ensure that there's a smooth transition of power and what changes are needed to ensure that the new leadership delivers on their municipal mandate? Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Obed Papela, joins us now here to unpack this and more. A question for you tonight. Has the National Department fulfilled its mandate in ensuring that, one, there is support uh, for the delivery of municipal services at the right quality and standard that they fulfill their mandate in promoting good governance and transparency and accountability. 072-110-5584. Tweet us at Newsroom405 if you wish to give us your views or your questions tonight for the Deputy Minister. Deputy Minister, good evening and thank you very much for your time joining us tonight on In Focus. Uh, good evening, Tabum Lili, and to the viewers of Newsroom Africa. 66 hung municipalities, you have a decline of um, voter turnout. By all means, an indication that communities are becoming far and far more removed from government and having faith in what government uh, can deliver. Do you take any accountability for those numbers? Well, let me first thank the people of South Africa for participating in these very important democratic processes of selecting your own leaders and, and representatives at the level of the sphere of local government. It's a very important sphere because that's where we live, that's where we can feel the situation, that's where we can feel governance. And then obviously, if things do not work for you, uh, it is the you as the citizens and ratepayers and communities that will then know that the local government is not functioning to the best of its uh, capacity. Uh, let me thank you all really for participating. Yes, the figures were very low, uh, not a satisfactory figure. And, uh, and we hope therefore that whatever had made people to stay away from the polls, uh, the elections themselves, will have to then begin to listen to them. It means the issue of service delivery is at the core uh, of what people are feeling about local government. And the more the local government does not satisfy the, 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 the needs and the, 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 of the people there, and then the service delivery is of poor quality or no service delivery at all, they will not see the significance of participating in local government. And I think it's something that we ought to correct in the next five years. Yeah. How do you correct that? It's good enough to identify as it's something that you ought to, to correct. And part of your mandate, as I, I put it uh, in, in broad terms, is to support the delivery of municipal services uh, so that it is delivered at the right quality and standard to promote good governance, to promote transparency, and also to promote uh, accountability. But uh, part of, of what you also need to do, particularly at uh, national level, uh, is, is, is to promote and ensure that there is intergovernmental relations and uh, people are working together. But what we are seeing, a continued state of weak governance, a continued state of incapacity as far as HR uh, is concerned. We've got poor financial administration, uh, but uh, also we've got constantly this inadequate cooperation between departments uh, and, and between province and national. Well, we, we, we are now beginning to develop a new model called the district development model that we think will make sure, therefore, that there's cooperation uh, of the three spheres of government, national, provincial, and local government. But in that, we'll also be able, then over a period of time, develop a one plan and also one budget. Once the plans have come together, integrated at that level of the district, within that district, there are local government uh, municipalities. We can then begin to pull them together towards that one plan. And even the budget will now begin to speak but obviously, it's a process in which we are still moving towards. But the model has now been embraced, is well welcomed, and then is now beginning to be there and, and, and to be known by yeah. those who are representatives of the local government. And across government systems, uh, all the civil servants know there for that. Going forward, we are no longer going to be working in silos, but we need to be uh, integrated, but also governed by the intergovernmental relations, as we have already alluded to that law. But in addition, uh, our department is supposed to be giving support to local government on a consist consistent, continuous way 
where we use Section 154 of the Constitution of South Africa that says we are obligated to support local government and not wait for crisis to emerge, not wait for the, that local government system to collapse, yeah. working with the province uh, cocktails that are there to ensure, yeah. therefore, that we have clear monitoring mechanisms, we have early warning systems, and then this unfortunately came towards the end of the term. And then we hope, therefore, that we are more ready now yeah. as the new term begins that we'll definitely see a better uh, focus on local government. Yeah, Deputy Minister, one would say the, the challenge so far with uh, the, 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 the six administrations is precisely the fact that you keep coming up with programs, right? I can count them for you. Project Consolidate, Project CN Zamanje, Operation Clean Audit, uh, Local Government Turnaround Strategy, much recent one, um, uh, you, you've got back to basics. Programs, 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 programs. Now you're telling us about a district development model. None of them. I mean, give me one that you could point to that you have put in place that you can say, well, this one certainly gave us some degree of results. Well, I mean, a number of successes were spot, but not optimally and not 100%. I'll agree with you. But it does not mean each program did not score a certain percentage that indeed did build as a building block towards a better local government system. And then and, 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 uh, Operation Consolidate uh, and then Clean Audit. At some point, we had a number of municipalities beginning to move in that particular direction. But there was a decline, particularly in the last term. But we have identified where, what were the challenges. Uh, some of the challenges is the skills and the capacity of the people that are elected and get selected by the political parties to come and serve in the local government. We hope this time around, political parties did listen to that, that. Please bring to us people with capabilities, with knowledge, with skills, and we hope, therefore, that we'll be better utilizing those skills to improve the local government system. Yes, uh, the district development model is not replacing Back to Basics. The Back to Basics remains as an anchor program to fulfill the mandate of local government, that of providing services that are of quality, services that are adequate, services that are durable, services that are, are able then also to help the people. But uh, as you say, we have had situation where the infrastructure was not being built for a, a long period. Uh, populations were growing, townships were ex uh, expanding, the, the villages were expanding. With the very same infrastructure, we'll then connect pipes to it. We'll then connect sanitation, where sanitation is available. Yeah. We'll then expand electricity even there. And it then begin to have strains that the capacity of the infrastructure is not adequate and you saw collapse, you saw the sewer spilling, we saw leakages now, because some of the infrastructure is old. So we really need to begin to focus on money being geared. And I know there's not enough money in South Africa, but then the finance ought to begin to focus on those particular issues. And we think with the district development model, those are the plans, not just programs, that are going to be really begin to re-engineer the local government yeah. uh, system in South Africa. But people want something concrete, Deputy Minister, something more concrete, a sustainable proposal to address poor performance, right? You already mentioned that, and we know it, and we have been knowing it. There are technical capacity gaps in our municipalities. Uh, and, I mean, you talk now of an induction program for councillors. That's not really going to help us with the personnel that sometimes is reluctant uh, and, and also skeptical to support the administration and in, in most instances display tendencies of resistance and obstructionist tendencies uh, towards the, the, the administration and fulfilling its duties. How are you going to deal with that? How you, what do you have to pull on? Right? Because you don't necessarily fire people who, are, who have been elected. What do you do? Well, this time around, I think political parties have strengthened their uh, systems of control and ensuring better accountability, that anyone who does not perform must go uh, in that particular system of local government where the citizens and the ratepayers and the communities are now fed up with local government that does no longer function. 
they can no longer tolerate it. And working with them will definitely make sure, therefore, that we listen to it. But promises is not what we are offering. There are concrete plans within the systems that we think once they are promoted and, and, and implemented, they will take us somewhere and we will then be working on an implementation model that now begin to respond to the challenges on the ground. That will then turn that situation. I'm more confident from where I'm sitting in the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs that this time around, I think uh, no party will want to be in government with lower voter turnout, as is the case. It's not a nice thing when the majority of the people just decides to stay home. Let's begin to clean our township. South Africa is one of the filthiest, and it's one of the tackles in the inductions to say, entering office, you now know what is it, uh, and we're not going to be spending more months just inducting, fewer days and weeks in induction immediately hit the ground running, begin to look at the IDPs that are there, begin to readjust them now to respond to service delivery. And obviously working with the... With All right, uh, we seem to be uh, having challenge there with the Deputy Minister. It looks like load shedding. I don't want to preempt it, but it certainly does look like load shedding. Uh, that has uh, caused uh, that loss of connection to the Deputy Minister of the Fabella Minister, Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Well, are you as confident as the Deputy Minister as far as this time around, they say, uh, parties are more serious and more determined on the transformation of local government. Let's hear your views. 072 or tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. We'll try and get that connection back on in a moment or otherwise uh, create some other means to be able to connect to your deputy minister. Do stay with us. Back with you tonight, cooperative governance and intergovernmental relations. It's the conversation tonight with the Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ovid Papel. Before the break, he feels more confident that parties are going to take the issue of the transformation of local government seriously uh, this time around. We want to hear what your views are. You can jump into this conversation uh, by sending us your WhatsApp message, 072-110-584, or you can tweet us tonight at Newsroom405. I wanted to talk about the IGR a little bit more, uh, Deputy Minister. Outcomes-based IGR, right? You try to explain this to, to Parliament at some point, and you say this is a systemic mechanism that manages relations between multiple polities and structures to achieve uh, the goals that are required for service delivery. How many forums, right, have you held at least in the last 24 months that sit and discuss matters uh, of, of common interest? Well, there are quite a number of them, uh, depending on the agenda items uh, across all departments within provinces and then within the 257 municipalities in the country. But also, you also have now the 44 districts that are going to be the focal point, including the eight metros, as other centers and uh, areas of focus, uh, where we'll then have to engage and then bring in experts in local government, academia, and then and, and those with knowledge, uh, those who might have worked in local government, also bring them closer so that all of us can put our hands on the deck and then say, how do we help this uh, level of the sphere of local government, which has been felt mostly by our own people. But in addition also, we have to look at the refinancing of the local government without the waste that already has been experienced. The Auditor General has been pointing on a lot of wasteful elements that we also have to cap so that the, the money that flows into local government goes to ground and then is able to deliver services and turn the situation around. But then as we really look at the refinancing, we must also look at accountability. As you earlier said, Tabo, that uh, there seems to have been lack of accountability. And and, and, and then we then have to strengthen that particular pillar of the democratic system. And where wrongdoing has happened, consequence management ought to be the order of the day so that those who are in there for wrong reasons can then be taken out. Yeah. We must also look at the human resource, as we have said also, that uh, some of the people who are employed, the capacity is low. We might then have to really take an audit, a serious audit on who are the people who are employed in local government. What skills do they have? Are they the right people on the right job? 
and if not so then to clean them out and then ensure therefore that we get and we professionalize local government to the best of our ability and then so that the councillors work with a good administration that knows what they ought to do in terms of delivery. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk then about that, the, the issue of finance. So do you believe that the departments at local government, the various sectors, are, are not adequately financed? I mean, the, the local government turnaround strategy identified underspending and corruption. Uh, so it's a little bit of a confusion to say, well, municipalities are underspending and some are stealing money, but yet you're saying departments are not uh, adequately financed. Well, they are not adequately financed. I mean, you take the issue of the infrastructure. The money that flows in will be focused on certain projects, but they can't use money on others, and they are limited in where the money ought to be spent. So even when the crisis is the old infrastructure that is decaying, it only gives them 5% to 10% of the use of the money to replace an infrastructure. If you use that percentage, it will take you 20 years to really replace the old infrastructure. So the remodeling and also refinancing is what we are saying we ought to do, begin to look at and then allow a system that then begins to tackle the challenges faced by each municipality. But we also have municipalities that are in financial distress, that are poor forever. There's no other revenue except just grants that goes into that uh, municipality. And also with unfortunate situation of people not paying for the services, uh, bridging and the municipality forever having to then begin to pay uh, amounts of money to ESCOM, to water boards uh, because of the water leakages or because of bridged electricity across. We just have to really move on an agenda of regularizing uh, that particular system and this need money. But the money you will then find that is there but is not intended for that because if you use it, the Auditor General will come and say it was not in the plans, it was not in the IDP, you can't use this money. So it's either go back or it get wasted for other things, uh, and, and that's why we already ought to close and ensure, therefore, that we kept the wrongdoing and then finish the rot that is happening there. How, how do you do that? How do you prompt uh, up, for example, province, right? one of the issues identified is inadequate or weak monitoring systems. So th they are unable to monitor the performance of the municipalities. Not only that, they're then unable to support those municipalities in time appropriately according to the diagnostic outcomes. So there's no diagnosis, no proper diagnosis of, of the challenges, and therefore you can't monitor but also can't support and intervene at the correct time. So how do you prop that up? Well, we, we have a new law that is going to Parliament before the end of the financial year. Uh, next year, around March, it will be hitting the Parliament floor, uh, called the uh, Intervention Monitoring and Support uh, Bill, uh, which is going to be now developing mechanisms, uh, systems, and processes to really ensure that they empower the, the provincial government, they empower the national departments and government around the issues of uh, timeless interventions, the monitoring system that will be able to have what we call the early detections and early warning systems so that we don't wait for the municipality to collapse and only then declare it in, uh, uh, as, as, as a going concern, but we are able to give that package of support, but also from the, the, the funding to recap some of the money and not just transfer it as is, hold it in certain percentages so that where the municipality is struggling to spend, then you bring in experts to come and help that municipality yeah. until they're able to turn around and be able to spend money on service delivery. So there are quite a variety of uh, issues that are coming. Is there law, but also the systems and the teams that have been prepared yeah. uh, that we'll see going into the local government space. I'm coming back to that law that's coming in, in, in March, but I want to come back to this point which uh, you, are, you are raising, uh, and uh, it is a valid point, but one of the issues that were raised uh, with uh, uh, Parliament was the deployment of one person as an administrator without experts to, 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 to support them uh, with the challenges that they are, they are going to encounter. So you send this one person with a personnel that has already failed, as opposed to an extent, to solve the problem. You say, no, this is the administrator, and you expect this person to turn around the, the, the municipality. And something, surely, that needs to, be, to change there. 
Well, definitely, and I agree full with you, but also we need to also begin to change on the attitude where provinces will then say, this is our sphere, you are interfering, even when we see that there's a trouble going on there. And we have been not using the law, uh, the constitutional law that say, if the minister says, province, X municipality is not performing, and the province ignores those particular calls, the minister can use what, uh, section 1397 directly and then say, I'm intervening directly. And whereas we, we use not to do it, until the court imposed it on us in the Liquor Municipality. Why? In, what, in what, 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 what had been the reluctance? There's this issue of cooperative governance that uh, we are three spheres independent and interrelated. And, and, and therefore, you ought to be constitutionally sound to, to then begin to give the other chance on the other sphere to do the right thing. But uh, in most often, the, we have seen uh, the DK, unfortunately, where nothing happens, and therefore, this law now is not longer going to be spared. And, and the minister will just say, I gave you two or three warnings. After two, three warnings, then we move in as national, together with national treasury, because we have packaged a, 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 a group of people with expertise, both in the inside the government and those who are outside government, to come in and really help us in that space quicker and faster so that we can see the results. When we come back from the break, I want you to expand how do we then insulate that particular process from the political infighting and how do we better articulate that political administrative interface which uh, is part of the challenges uh, that are leading to the uh, many municipalities not being functional. Cocktail Deputy Minister Obed Papela staying with us and uh, we'll continue uh, the conversation with your thoughts on 072-110-5584 or you tweeting us tonight at Newsroom 405. In focus with you in a moment. In focus, corporate governance in the spotlight as well as intergovernmental relations. The conversation tonight with the Cocktail Deputy Minister Obed Papela and Thank you very much for your messages. We're going to them uh, as well right now. Taking this one from uh, C. Shuba in Kibla Park. Say, personally, I think the ANC must not be given too much power at the local government until such time that they deal with internal factions and corruption. Now, Deputy Minister, before the break, this is what I wanted to put to you. I'm saying, how do we insulate that process from infighting within the organization right there is a lack of, of uh, appreciation of this political administrative interface uh, in such a way that if you're saying right by march next year there will be this law in place in fact it has always been there that the minister can intervene but you've been reluctant to use it how are you going to deal with the question politically of people who will say well now you're using this tool uh, for example, if we, we take Tswane, where province wanted to intervene, the Democratic Alliance saying, no, 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 the, the, the MEC just wants to use Section 139 to fight uh, political battles. Well, obviously, it's a very complex environment, local government. It's a multi-party instituted uh, area where it's not just one party dominant. It's quite a number of parties, big and small, that you'll find in local government system. And they really read the law, they do read the constitution, and and, and and whatever you do in that particular area, you must be constitutional and you must be uh, legislative, so, so that there's no gaps left in trying to really build uh, and ensure that local government systems works. And, uh, and then, then in as far as the, the, the infightings and the factions of various political parties that sometimes play themselves in the space is the most unfortunate part. And, and we just hope, therefore, that political parties will really take care of that environment. It has been a messy environment in the past five years. And we hope now, as uh, we want to give hope to the new local government systems as we move forward, uh, we have learned a lot, and, and, and therefore the citizens are also fed up with us, and that is why they came in less numbers and, uh, and, 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 and so forth. So we, we hope, therefore, that the political party system can then be strengthened uh, and then ensure, therefore, that uh, we do not then interfere with that environment and mix up politics and administration. Administration must be independent, professional, guided by the rules that governs it, and then we should not be interfering as the PFMA 
and the Municipal Finance Management Act uh, dictates that we should not interfere in the administration side of things. And, 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 and we hope, therefore, that we'll have to clean in that area and really give a very good image of local government. Let's talk about Mfulen because you've already raised it. I mean, are you saying as COCTA, you, you will go into that municipality? The ANC's Gauteng Provincial Secretary there, Jacob Kau, is saying infighting is to blame for the increase in corruption allegations against members in the provincial government. This was with an interview with one of the, of, of, of the publications. So you're saying you're going to go there and saying, irrespective of these political uh, fighting that you're talking about, this is what administratively we ought to do now? Well, definitely the minister, Professor Zanad Lamini Zuma, has been saying that when you look at the local government system, it's like an omelet or, uh, uh, because it's the yellow and the white are so mixed up that you cannot separate. Uh, and, and if you could really develop a system that has the, the yellow in the center on an egg, and the, and, and, and the white on the outer, so that the white is those who come and go. They get elected every five years, and then the yellow remains the, 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 the center which holds the institutional element of the local government system. It's what we will have to build, all of us as political parties, all of us as government, all of us as citizens also, by ensuring that local government is as accountable and by really professionalizing that particular. And I'm glad that Sarga is also engaging on a module of really professionalization and ensuring, therefore, that we're able to distinct administration and the political interface not to be mixed up. But then and also as uh, uh, the situation unfolds in certain municipalities like Mpudeni, Ligua, and then others, where the politics has really rendered the system down and collapsed a number of municipalities were kind of shy from that. The citizens have seen it, they felt it, and then we hope, therefore, that the next five years becomes a better system of local government that emerges. Is, is there a prescribed recourse for councillors who do that at municipalities, councillors who engage in conflict amongst themselves, but even maybe engage in conflict uh, with, 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 with management? Is there a prescribed recourse as to what needs to happen, when it needs to happen? Well, the Municipal Structures Act that the President uh, proclaimed as amended, uh, which came into operation from the 1st of November as people were voting, is now beginning to have an enforceable code of conduct. Uh, it's no longer voluntarily like in the past uh, 25 years. Uh, it's going to be enforceable. Anyone who transgress on it irrespective of the party you belong to. Uh, if you are on the wrong side, you'll be on the wrong side. Read the, 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 that. And also, all councillors are expected in terms of the Structures Act as amended, then to also go for lifestyle audits so that uh, people come in within a year or two, they change their lifestyles, and all of a sudden they live an opulent life. Uh, all of a sudden, citizens are watching and will also be then throwing the law to really begin to come in and inspect as to how you gained some of the, 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 the things that you are, you are now displaying all over. So it's a very good law that the president uh, were able to take lessons in the past years, uh, 21 years of local government, and then going forward, we say, uh, this is now the new way of doing things. Don't come into local government to make money but come in into the local government to serve and serve the people. Yeah. And is there a time frame to these issues of Section 139? I think one of the questions is Mfuleni, for example, I think it's now three years, if not uh, less or maybe more, that has been under administration. Is there a time frame as to when it needs to be out of administration? Uh, uh, and uh, are you getting, for example, reports constantly as to where we are now and, and when do we expect to have reached the turnaround and, the, and then coming out of Section 139? Well, reports do go to Parliament. The National Council of Provinces will ensure that uh, the reports come and they get scrutinized. They do visit such municipalities also. But also in the National Assembly, the Portfolio Committee on COGTA will also from time to time invite the minister to come and give an account in terms of the effectiveness 
of the Section 139, but uh, also we will then be looking at the module of all those municipalities currently that are under 139 as we go to the next administration, review them as to whether the, 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 the issues that created them to be uh, by certain people who are not coming back, whether we can then free them to really start afresh, be guided, be supported, but we'll then have to bring in the team that we have assembled as COPTA and the National Treasury to really go to those municipalities and help us just a few months of cleaning all those particular issues that made them to go in the wrong direction and hoping that the new breed of councillors that are coming in will really serve with purpose and really clean local government. One of the things, Deputy Minister, we are anticipating, of course, coming out of these uh, local government elections, highly contested and uh, pretty much uh, uh, hung in many parts, is that there is a possibility of some municipal council failing to constitute themselves uh, and elect office bearers. Is there an intervention uh, from, from national? Should that happen? Well, you, definitely the law is there, the Municipal Structures Act itself, that says that if within 14 days from the, the gazetting of the names, the council does not seek to appoint a speaker who will then assume office to then pre, uh, preside on the appointment of the mayor and, uh, and then other officials, uh, and there's the, the stalemate that arises uh, after 14 days of that happening, the provincial government will then take over that municipality under administration and, uh, and then run it uh, with the view to proclaim elections within 90 days uh, uh, since the time when they take over uh, so that there can then be fresh elections uh, so that the, the, the voters can then decide on breaking the stalemate itself once and for all. Let's take more of some WhatsApp messages coming through tonight uh, on this conversation on cooperative governance and intergovernmental relations. This one from Justice Mwepe in Bulukwan is saying the state of service delivery is really so bad and disappointing. How long will it take to turn this into a better living condition for society? Cater deployment must not be considered as this compromises service delivery. Deputy Minister, weigh in on uh, the policy of cater deployment. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult to talk to, to you because uh, you're talking about government, but of course, cater deployment is a policy of the ANC. It's not a policy of government, right? Although it is implemented in, in government. Uh, I mean, is government willing to really put its head on the block to say, we will reject this idea uh, of, of cater deployment? Well, we, 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 are, we are discussing across all political parties because I think, Tabo, you know that once a party wins a, a municipality, uh, they will then come and say, we've got our own people that will want to bring in to come and serve. Uh, I'm not sure whether you call it just an ANC uh, policy, but it happens across all other man uh, parties yeah. where they will then bring their own people to come and serve in that municipality. They may not call it CADA, but they will then prefer people who will understand them, yeah. the people that will then pursue the objective and the manifesto of that party because you will not want to be served by somebody who does not uh, understand your own manifesto. So but, but, but this, 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 this is not probably the problem that we're having with technical <laughs> capacity gaps. This thing of our people, no. We must now bring uh, so our people. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just trying to help you that don't blame it on one party. It happens across all parties. <laughs> but, but, but obviously, we want really local government to be a professionalized space and, 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 and therefore hoping there for that uh, going forward, the people that comes in comes in with good intentions, are people with capacity, with skills, uh, with knowledge that will really turn things around. Uh, so that service deliveries uh, can uh, happen, as already saying, when are we going to uh, give that chance of a service delivery happening? L let me give you just one or two examples. Uh, you, you, you find like there's one municipality, I'm not going to say where, where the previous municipal manager had entered into a procurement of outsourcing the trucks that collects refuse. 
and then, then they enter into a payment agreement with that particular service provider, and the trucks are outsourced, but they are bought with the municipality money, uh, these trucks, but they are not owned by the municipality, but they are owned by the person who wins the tender. And then, then they then put a clause, a funny clause that says, you can, if you default in two months of payment, uh, then those trucks belong to the person that uh, 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 on the tender, not the municipality. Yo. So when the new administration came in, they then defaulted deliberately just a few months before, and then those trucks were taken and they are owned by those people, having been paid with the public money. And then by the time the other municipality comes to say, well, now want to clean the town, they found that they don't have refuse trucks, all of them. Uh, are now being withdrawn by the service provider. And when they check, but the money that paid the tax is the municipality money, but the contract was badly designed. We don't want those type of officials to come into the local government system. Politicians must really watch out and ensure, therefore, that uh, through the council resolutions, they scrutinize all the contracts before they can approve them. So that this yes, yes, yeah, yeah, it must come to an end. People must read must look at every clause and scrutinize and ensure that we are here to even protect the public uh, assets of, of the municipality because those assets belong to the people. We come back in a moment and the conversation continues with more of your WhatsApp messages. 72 110 We also want to get to the bottom. We'll come back live with us tonight on News in Africa Channel 405. Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ovid Bopela, with us. And, of course, uh, taking your views tonight on cooperative governance and intergovernmental relations. And uh, we, we want to expand a little bit on the district development model. The department has not been clear, according to some, on whether this model works or whether it uh, has failed. Some experts are saying uh, it's been a dismal failure and blaming in fighting within the ANC uh, as being the reason government has failed to implement this district development model. I know the president is going to the Eastern Cape, and I'm sure amongst the things that he'll be launching and talking about is the district development model. Is this intervention working to uplift municipalities? Well, the intervention is failing you, I must say, and, uh, and, 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 and it's just two years old now. It has been workshopped, it has been uh, trained upon uh, everybody, and I think there's a body of a, a knowledge that is now beginning to rise. And some experts are also coming in appreciating it. Uh, and there are three pilot projects that we also have to take a study on, the OR Tambo District Municipality, where the first launch took place, followed by the Etegwini Metro, looking at the Metro Municipality, whereas O.R. Tambo was looking at the deep rural area, and then uh, Waterbeck in Limpopo was more a mining town, and uh, because we do have such areas. And then and, and, and I think just going in there, uh, there's a body of good experiences that are emerging, but definitely if infighting happens and then there's defocusing uh, on how we ought to then begin to ensure that the district development model happens, it will have an impact which is negative, but uh, we are jealously guarding and ensuring that this is the way we ought to really make sure that uh, local government, we focus on 44 districts and 8 metros, 52 in all in all. Even ourselves as journalists, we can't be in the 257 municipalities, but we can be, be able to find those municipalities at the district uh, in one plan, in one budget, uh, now beginning to consolidate on programs that are announced through the state of the nations, the state of the provinces by mayors themselves at the local level, by the mayor in the district, and then identifying the core and the catalyst project that needs to be implemented so that we implement and it helps us to implement, not just announce and leave announcements hanging, money not being spent, not hitting the ground, designs and then procurement processes uh, must follow the law, but must not take forever, yeah. so so that then the services can really reach the people in a bigger way. But but you see, the complaint is is around. For example, I, I know you're not implementing it in Swane, but it would have been a good place to to start and implementing it there. Relevant sector departments not coming on board on the water issue. For example, one of the uh, glaring examples of 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 uh, the departments, uh, provincial, local, working in isolation 
Why is there no cooperation in resolving that water issue in Hamanska? Well, there should be cooperation by all departments, and then you, you have really pointed a, 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 an area. Uh, we are district champions as ministers and deputy ministers, and it's upon those champions when they see a glaring omission and no working together that they need to go in there, call all players, the water sanitation departments, the municipality, other service providers, the water boards, and say, this crisis ought to be stopped, and let them begin to find out what are the issues, what are the challenges in the system, and find a solution. And where you need the private sector to help, allow for the space of the private sector also coming in. The, the DGM is designed for that. Where I'm a champion, we are beginning to, to pull that uh, uh, issue, and I've realized, therefore, that this not working together becomes the enemy of service delivery and and, 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 and I'm now beginning to say, let's go into a summit with service providers and professionals who can really give us solutions uh, as South, Af South Africans and not just relying on those that are working in the system. And I think if we all then can really pull in that way, this silo mentality and not working together will come to and tackle those fundamental issues that are an issue, water, the roads with potholes, electricity not reaching everybody, the street lights that are not being fixed, just the, the, the back to basic issues. Then thereafter, then begin to look at the economic issues on how municipalities can now begin to grow their economies, serve the industry so that industry doesn't have to migrate from one municipality to the other because services are poor. Yeah. Because when they migrate, they leave people unemployed in that particular area and ensure therefore that we are able then to have municipalities servicing the industry, attracting new investment, ensuring that economic activity expands in those particular municipalities, small and big metros and intermediary municipalities, uh, so that we could then begin to see South Africa in the 52 spots functioning in a way that pulls everybody, including the private sector. Yeah. There's lots. I've got another question, but I want to take some of the messages coming through so, uh, so that we can uh, be able to address those questions uh, as well tonight. Uh, Gulam in Lanesia saying, uh, it's good to induct councillors. However, the councillor roles and duties and limitations are not explained to the voters. Hence, frustrations are taken out on the councillors, or else many things are out of their hands. You find that to be true, uh, Deputy Minister? Uh, it's true, we, we focus more on councillors. However, there's a system also that exists within the councillors called community, hot communities. After 120 days, there will be elections of the the, 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 the ward committees. And in the ward committees, there's 10 people that get selected in the ward where the ward uh, committee members who live or resides in that are there. And they are the ones that will then bring the program closer uh, to the communities. And I think that system is now almost 15 years old, but is not gaining traction. Uh, communities do not participate fully and satisfied. And I think it's, it's just like the same when you send your child to a school and there's a, a school governing meeting for all parents to come. Majority of parents don't go, only 10 or 15 or so, or a, a quarter of them go. And I think citizens take your democracy with seriousness, please participate in it. It doesn't end with you just casting a vote. You must also attend all meetings that what committees and the what councillors will be convening avail yourself to serve in those communities, bring these programs closer to the people, and I agree with Gulam to say citizens also ought to be empowered uh, through uh, civic education. And I think we need to, to really invest in that particular program. Yeah. The other question, as we were talking about the district development model and cooperation, is the question on housing, right? Uh, housing, of course, uh, is a national competence. Uh, uh, local government can only deliver so many houses, and those houses are supposed to be built by province. However, local government says, maybe I'm going to use the wrong uh, PFMA or MFMA term here, uh, they, they could be able... The province, uh, through national department that will be building houses, their role is to re rezone the area where houses are going to be built, make sure, therefore, that you are integrated development plans, which is your budget speaks to the services that will go to that particular new area. 
But with urbanization also, I think we are also beginning to see challenges within municipalities where people arrive in big numbers, they see an empty stand or land, they just move in there and build and in demand for services. And the plans of the municipalities are not adjusted in that. And, and we then begin to see this demand saying, we want houses, we want water, we want electricity. And, 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 and that then fractures the plans of the municipalities because migration is faster than the plans. And we really have to begin to adjust the way we do plan in advance so that we anticipate uh, this particular migration from rural to urban as a phenomenon that is global and we just have really to, to, to learn. But obviously municipalities rating is when they have capacity uh, and then they know how that they will then get that. Even the metros, they are rationalizing to make sure that they, for that capacity is there, but uh, uh, we'll then have to look at it on how we help the municipality to be rated differently from one to the other. Deputy Minister, I appreciate your time. Fortunately, we have flat out of time, and uh, thank you very much uh, for indulging us uh, and, of course, uh, helping us understand this interface between uh, the various spheres of government and how you will be working together going forward. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much to our viewers and also to, to yourself, Chabon Gwili. Fantastic, and thank you for all your messages tonight on WhatsApp. When we continue next, uh, we look at the themes that the midterm budget vote uh, will need to be looking at uh, with uh, Swiss State. Stay with us.